In this video, we're going to start looking at the idea of modelling real situations, here using algebraic equations. Mathematical modelling essentially involves using mathematical representations, you might think equations, to describe and solve real world problems. Now such problems often involve us translating words or written descriptions into mathematical descriptions, equations and expressions. Now often this is the difficult part of the job. Let's start off by talking about formulae. You might know about formulae already, you probably do. Formulae is sometimes what we would call an equation when the equation represents some general rule. So for example, you probably know Einstein's famous E equals MC squared equation. Of course, most of us know the circumference of a circle, C, is equal to 2 times pi times the radius of the circle. When we state formulae in general, the, the formula often has more than one unknown in it, like in the circumference example, C and R. We can solve a formula for a different unknown by rearranging it. Have a think to yourself why that might actually be useful. As an example, if I know the radius of a circle, I can find its circumference, the distance around the edge, using the formula C equal to 2 pi R. But what about if I wanted to determine the radius, given that I already knew the circumference, perhaps by measuring it as I walked around the circle? How would I figure that out? We want to know what R is, given that we do know C. Well, essentially, we need to rearrange this equation, we'll solve it for R. So we need to use the things that we've learned about solving algebraic equations, but where we've got more than one sort of variable sitting in there. Essentially, we're going to rearrange for R. So in this case, we start with C equal to 2 pi R, and note that we want to isolate R by itself. To isolate R by itself, I need to get rid of this 2 pi that's in the way. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. Of course, when we have a fraction with a 2 on the top and the bottom, we can cancel them when they're part of a product. Pi similarly can be cancelled, and we're left, if we like to just rearrange by flipping sides, that's perfectly fine, R equal to C divided by 2 pi. And that's an easier example of trying to find a different variable by rearranging the equation, solving it for that variable. What about this one? We want to rearrange the formula Q equal to 9x minus y over 5z to produce a formula for y. Well, again, we've got an equation and we're simply asking to solve it for y. We start with Q equal to 9x minus y over 5z. What I like to do in this kind of case is get rid of the fraction. To get rid of that fraction, noticing I'm dividing by 5z, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5z to get rid of it. So I have 5zq on the left, 5z over 5z will cancel, leaving me with 9x minus y on the right. Now I want to get in at that y to solve for it, so I need to expand those brackets. I leave the left side, 5zq, and on the right I expand with the distributive law to get 9x minus 9y. Next, I want to get rid of the 9x, because I want to get y by itself, so I'm going to subtract it from both sides. I have 5zq minus 9x on the left, and subtracting it from the right, it goes away. It cancels with the 9x, so I'm left with 9 minus 9y. My final step is to get rid of this minus 9 multiplier that's stopping me from seeing y by itself. So I have 5zq minus 9x, all divided by minus 9 equal to y. You can leave it like that if you like, or you can rewrite it as a statement for y. I'm going to bring that minus out the front as well. We have minus 5zq minus 9x, all divided by 9. So this is our formula for y. But what if there is no formula? We need to make our own. And we do that by modelling. There are many procedures for modelling that you can find that depend on the different person who might be teaching you it or the, what, the things that they're trying to model. And here's one to get us started. The first thing I always like to do is to read the real world problem at least a couple of times. I try to get an overview of the problem on the first read through. 
and then on the second, start to write down the info that I need to construct the equations or information that I'm even given. Following that, we can identify any unknowns and I assign a letter to each of these. Write down any mathematical relationships or equations between the unknowns, things that you might know. Sometimes tables or figures can help you as well. Once you've got it that far, you've probably done most of the hard work. And then you can move on to solving the equation for whatever you need to know. Finally, it's good to state the full solution in a form that makes sense given the problem you had in the first place. And finally, check your answer. Let's have a look at this simple sort of everyday problem here. If I'm purchasing a bottle of milk and a loaf of bread, and that costs $6.60 in total. Bread costs $1.20 more than milk. I want to know what's the cost of each item. Give yourself a little bit of time now, following through this process, or one that you might like to use yourself, to try to get to the answer for this problem. Okay, so I've read through the problem a couple of times now, and I know that the question I'm being asked is what is the cost of each item? So the unknowns that I'm dealing with is the cost of a bottle of milk and the cost of a loaf of bread. I'm going to introduce some variables for those. So I have x is the cost of a bottle of milk and y is the cost of a loaf of bread. Now based on the information I've given, I'm going to write down any relationships that I can get from the information that relates x and y. First of all, I'm told that a bottle of milk and a loaf of bread together cost $6.60. So x plus y must be equal to $6.60. The next thing I'm told is that bread costs $1.20 more than milk. Now you need to be careful with this one. Bread is the thing that costs more. So milk plus $1.20 equals the cost of bread. So I can say that y is equal to the cost of milk plus $1.20. Okay, so now I can start to go about solving and figuring out what x and y are. I note that in the second equation, I've got an equation for y already. So I'm going to use that result and substitute it back into the first equation. x plus y, but I'm going to replace y with x plus $1.20. Should be equal to $6.60. In other words, two x's will be equal to $6.60 minus $1.20, or $5.40. To get x by itself, I need to divide both sides by 2, so I have x is equal to $2.70. I figured out one of my variables. Now I'm going to go back to the second equation again. I could also use the first, but the second one looks better, I think, in this case, and replace x with $2.70. y is equal to $2.70 plus $1.20, or $3.90. So I've got my mathematical result. I should now express it in the correct form for the problem I started with. That means writing things down in a sentence, the cost of each item essentially. Cost, the cost of a bottle of milk is $2.70 and of a loaf of bread is $3.90. The final step in that modelling procedure I showed you earlier was to go back and check those. I'm going to leave that one for you to go back and check that those make sense with the given statements in the problem. So there we go, a little bit of a, a video on modelling with algebraic equations. We talked about models and formulae, we used our skills in solving equations to rearrange formulae to make different variables the subject or the focus. And finally, we started our uh, adventures into building mathematical models of simple situations.